Hi everyone, it's Claire here and today I'm going to do a tutorial slash informational video on stepped cores because it's one that I've been asked to do quite a few times and I thought today would be as good a day as any to film it. I did try filming it at the sewing machine but I couldn't show you as clearly so I've decided to do it this way um, and hopefully it'll be nice and easy for everyone to see what I'm saying and for me to explain it and the lights a bit better. So what is a stepped core? It's basically a different way of layering your core before you attach it to your topper. So instead of having all your pieces at exactly the same length, a stepped core has your pieces at all a slightly shorter length coming into the center or maybe at the back, which we'll talk about in a minute. Why would we use a stepped core? Well, the first reason, and one that a lot of people come to stepped cores for, is because their sewing machine physically will not sew through the amount of layers they want to have in their pad. Now, sometimes a sewing machine just won't deal with this kind of fabric, especially if it is a um, cheaper end one, which there is nothing wrong with. I started sewing cloth pads on a secondhand cheapy sewing machine and it did me good right up until I decided right I'm going to sell and um, I needed to kind of up production but many machines struggle with things like Zorb 1 with flannel which can be quite thick and quite a what's the word like hog compact fabric when you start layering it as well as super heavy bamboo fleece is another one that sewing machines can struggle with a bit. So by doing a stepped core, your machine can subtly cope with it and you can have as many layers as you want. The second reason is budget. If you have a certain amount of fabric to upcycle with or you have been able to purchase a meter or two meters of core fabric and you need to get your entire stash out of that, then you want to be using up every last piece that you possibly can in your cores and a stepped core is a great way to do that. The next reason is if you only bleed in one specific area of your pad so it is kind of a waste of material for some people to have a pad that offers complete coverage when they only need center bleeder coverage, back bleeder or front bleeder coverage and they don't normally migrate anywhere else. This has been their bleeding pattern for years, it doesn't migrate, then you would feel confident enough to use a stepped core to just put the fabric where you need it and again it makes your core fabrics, your upcycled fabrics last longer and go further and make you more pads. Um, so that's really the main reasons for choosing a step core. What, let's have a look at what we've got going on. So this is a three layer stepped core that I'm going to show you. And your first layer is always the full size of your template. So if that's your core size template, you draw around it, cut it out as normal. Your next layer will be in slightly all the way round, sort of about three quarters of a centimetre. It's got to be enough of a gap, so you can probably judge it by enough of a gap that you can sew around the outside of each, le uh, each lever, each layer comfortably because you will only ever be sewing through two layers at a time. That is why this is an amazing method for people whose machines refuses to sew through a large amount of fabrics. And then obviously this piece here, and I specifically chose to show you this version, but we will talk about um, other ways of doing this in a minute, because when you cut out your cores, you often get this piece of fabric in the middle. Now, a lot of people use that for unsponges or to make interlabial pads, but if you're on a budget, and you really, you have to use your core fabrics to make your cloth pads stash, nothing else, then this makes a great layer in a stepped core. You can cut it into a petal shape. Um, you can work with all different bits. In fact, let, let's up this and go for a four layer. I have this piece here, 
which is just a small off cut, which again, I can add on. So construction of the core. Now we're only sewing through two layers at a time. Like I said, this is why your machine will be able to cope with however many layers of Zorb you want, however many layers of super heavy bamboo fleece you want, because you're never cut it, you're never sewing through more than two at a time. Welcome, Ellen. Are you okay? Are you just gonna stand there? Okay, you carry on about your business. So. Lay your items out and take your first piece. So your smallest piece is always your first piece. We have our smallest piece. We take our next smallest piece and put this on there. Then you want to pin that. Now notice that there is a gap all the way around here. That's the important extra gap that we need to leave for every layer. That is the key to your stepped core. So we sew these two pieces together. You can use a zigzag stitch, you can use a straight stitch, whatever would be your normal process. Now once these are sewn together, we take our next layer of fabric and we put this where we want it on there and again we would pin this on. Now if you have a look, again we have, because it's white, it's not showing up very well, the bamboo fleece showed up horribly, hence why we are using Zorb. We can see again that there is a gap along here. That is the most important part of creating your step core. So when we sew this piece on, we will simply sew on this outside gap all the way around the edge, down here on this gap and to the end and back up. So not touching this top layer at all. We're just still sewing through two layers of fabric. Then we take our third layer of core fabric, pop on this again in whatever position. And as you can see, it's got a gap from where this would have been connected. And you attach that one along this gap right the way round like you would normally attach your core across the gap again and all the way round. So again, only sewing through two layers of fabric. And this is why any machine can cope with a stepped core. So that's your process. Now, obviously there are some variations on this. If you are a back bleeder, for example, then you will want to make sure that you cut a piece just on the inside of this that does your back coverage. The same for your front coverage. You may, if you're not worried about scraps, you don't have any scraps, you're using your scraps for other things, you may just do a rectangle that again is cut slightly inside this piece for your middle bleeder. Now, one of the only real complaints I have heard about stepped cores, especially when using scraps like this, is you can feel it. Now, the way that I have found personally to get around that problem is once you have come to this stage, so you have got all of these layers connected. You've connected this one to this one. This one is now connected to this one. We take our bottom and we turn over this section, put it where we want it, pin it, and now attach your core. Now, the process of doing that, one, because you've pinned this all on and you've sewn it on, you have actually compacted this. If it is the other way around and the layers are just heading up getting smaller, there's nothing to compact them except your body weight when you're wearing it in your underwear. This way around, you've already compacted it. Now, I can tell you from running my hands over it, now I can barely feel it. I can feel the towel ends here but they would be at a position now where they wouldn't bother me. But in this middle part where I've really put the layering because it's for center bleeder, I can't feel anything. It just feels like I have put three full layers of fabric on here. And this is how I have found to get away from that uncomfortable feeling with your layering. Now, again, if you have, you can do this method even if you're doing extra for the back, extra for the front. You can turn any of those methods in on themselves 
if you don't want to be able to feel the layering process that you have done. Now, another thing you can use stepped cores for is to create a thinner pad at the back. So if you are wanting to create some specially for work, especially for school, and you are worried about them showing and you don't need coverage right to the back, you just come back a bit. If you are someone who frequently bleeds off your pad, then the first thing I would recommend is going a bit longer, add an inch. And I wouldn't recommend on a pad that you normally bleed off of that length, I would not recommend doing a stepped core because it will just take away from your coverage. But if you never use this back few centimeters of your pad, you always bleed sort of center and then back into the middle here, but never right back there. You can have your layers complete. So you only need to step this back bit and just have each back bit slightly shorter than the last to create a slightly thinner pad at the back. So that's another way of constructing your stepped core, basically. So have I covered everything? I think we have. We've covered the only problem that I personally have encountered and what I did to get around it. The pros of doing a stepped core. I think we have covered it all. So that is how to create yourself a stepped core. After you have finished this process, then you would literally just attach your core to your topper as normal. Now, obviously, if you have a stepped core of this kind of construction, then when you attach it to your topper, you want to attach this part to your topper. So round the edge of the bottom piece. That's the part you would attach. All of this is already attached to your core. You only need to do one lot of sewing all the way around the edge. So, you know, onto your topper. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. I think I explained myself clearly. If you have done this, then again, it makes no difference. You would still do the same process. You would put it say our topper is laying here this the board is the topper we would take this turn it over place it onto our topper pin it and then sew round the very edge of your core so either way you do it you want to be turning it over onto your topper so that your whatever part you want facing you is on the top and then you sew it onto your topper that way now, of course, you could sew it on so that this back part is against your topper and then the layers come downwards. Now, I would advise against that. I'm not saying you can't do it because everyone does their own thing and everything works differently for different people. But depending on the um, backer you are using and how water resistant it is, you don't want to say you're a front bleeder and this is the side that's against your fleece. You don't want to funnel the blood down and out the fleece. So it just takes the pressure off the core if we allow this part to soak it up on initial, what do you want to call it? Like outlet, <laughs> initial outlet of the fluid soaks here. Then it can come down and kind of filter down rather than having your initial outlet here, but then the coverage just gets thinner and thinner going inwards. So, um, but that's just my personal, how I personally do it. If you want to swap it up, give it a try. If you do it that way, then go for it. Comment down below if that works for you, because we're always all learning from each other. Everyone does things a little bit differently. But that is it, stepped cores. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and tutorial. I will speak to you all soon. Bye for now.